Good morning, this is Ed Wilson, the Microsoft Scripting Guy. And today I want to talk a little bit about using Windows PowerShell to handle um, non-terminating errors. So uh, if I have a, um, a command uh, such as get child item and I look for a folder that doesn't exist, when I run this, this is going to generate an error. Um, the thing is that um, this particular error is not a terminating error and I could have this command in a script and it would go to the next line and everything would be groovy. So the problem comes is uh, when I want to use structured error handler, I try cut finally, and I want to try this command and I suspect that this folder might not be there so I decide that I want to do some uh, structured error handling. I'd like to handle this error yeah, and um, do something, yeah, maybe create the folder, uh, maybe just simply um, stop a copy process or something. Uh, there could be all kinds of things that I may want to do and all kinds of reasons why it might be really important that a folder actually exists when I think it exists. But the problem is that when I run this, and then um, I still get the error. Uh, it clears the error because that's the finally block, but it doesn't do anything that's in my catch block. So I'm not catching this particular error. Now the thing is that if I look at the error action preference, um, the this is the variable hub, and we can see that it's set to continue. And what this means is that if an error occurs, uh, Windows PowerShell is going to try to continue. Uh, that means that it's going to like, um, you know, basically go to the next line. Now, the thing that's uh, a bit interesting here is I could set this to, um, yeah, silently continue. Yeah, and if I did that, then that's basically uh, the um, you know um, the on error resume next kind of thing that was in VB script, which was not really a very good thing to do. Actually, I always thought it was a bit suspicious when I seen um, you know scripts that had like on error resume next, and um, then I could have a comment or something. This line is required for this script to work. That's telling me that there's probably something in that script that doesn't work. So you know. We never ever you know see ignore you know set for an error action preference uh, in what is PowerShell. Most people just leave it at continue, which means the errors are going to show up if they're there. But essentially, you know, on error, we're resuming next. We're going to the next line uh, when the error occurs. It's just that we're letting you know that the error occurred. And like I said before, there could be all kinds of reasons why we wouldn't want to do this. Uh, for instance, I seen a uh, script one time that was uh, written by an administrator, and he basically copied a whole bunch of folders, um, you know, from a um, from one computer. Uh, he wanted to connect to a share and to paste those folders to that share, and then he was going to go back to the original folder and delete all of the files. Well, the thing was that uh, he copied all of the files. Uh, he tried to connect to the remote server, but that server was down. Well, then the next line of the code was to go back and delete everything from that original folder. So, you know, boom, you know, he just deleted all of his stuff, but he never got a copy of it. So, you know, this is one of the reasons, for instance, you know, why we really want, want to do try catch finally. But the problem is that catch doesn't catch this error. So what I need to do is to change uh, the value of error action preference. Now I can do this globally by um, you know, setting this in the script up here, or in what is PowerShell we can actually change it um, uh, in the script itself, we're on the individual commandlet, and notice that we have a number of uh, options. We can continue, which is the default, ignore it, uh, we can inquire, and inquire means like, hey, dude, what do you want to do? You know, um, you know uh, silently continue, which I'd already mentioned, which means basically, you know, don't tell me, but go on and try to continue to the next line. Um, but we can also tell it to stop, and um, a lot of people uh, suspend is really good because then that's essentially letting me 
do some other things and then resume after I've made my changes. Uh, it's kind of like entering a debugger, but not quite. Uh, so that could actually be really useful. But a lot of people used to ask me, well, why do I want to stop if an error occurs? Don't I want it to go to the next line? And if I change it to stop, then what I'm essentially doing is now I'm making this a terminating error. You know, so now the error will stop. You know, PowerShell can't go any further. And when that happens, then we're going to catch the exception. And then we're going to go in and enter our finally block. So when I run the script now, then um, we'll see that we catch the exception. So the script would have stopped. Um, and uh, then um, we, we catch it. And then we go into our finally block here. Now, if I was to have this command here uh, without uh, the structured error handling there, you know, then we run it. And it doesn't look like it makes any difference at all. I mean, we're still going to our next line in our code, um, which, or we're returning to the PowerShell prompt. Uh, we're still getting an error displayed. It doesn't look like it did anything whatsoever. And so people see this, and that's another reason why they go, well, dude, that doesn't do anything. Yeah, you know, the magic comes uh, when I put it inside the structure error handling block, try catch finally. So uh, this is one way I can do this, and I'm not messing up my environment. Uh, the other way, of course, is to actually you know, read the original value for the error action preference, um, and then in my finally block uh, to, to change that back to the original value. So that might look something like this, uh, dollar old uh, equals a dollar error action preference. And then uh, what I want to do is to uh, set dollar error action preference uh, as equal to stop. And uh, then over here, then in my finally block, what I would do then is I could go back to a dollar error action preference uh, equals a dollar old and uh, do it that way. And, and then in this case, I wouldn't be uh, doing it like this. And if I do it that way, you know, that's, that's a lot more work. You know, it's still going to be essentially the same thing. Um, but... Um, yeah, let's see here. Uh, stop, uh, stop. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, that, that's uh, so. That's that's one way of doing it, but uh, not necessarily you know the way that we would um, want to do it. It's a lot easier to just specify it specifically on the um, the command itself. So I'm Ed Wilson, the Microsoft Script guy, and um, this is uh, working with um, structured error handling.